makers, I'm Catherine with Sheer Stitchery, and this is your spot for all things sewing and DIY, so smash that subscribe button down below. This week, I wanted to share with you with the sew along for the Harper Knit Cardigan by Sinclair Patterns. Let's get to it. So before we begin, I wanted to mention that I got this pattern printed out in AO paper as well as the fabric for this from my Threadcrate box and it was the October box. So if you want to see that unboxing, I will link that down below. And if you want to save a bit of money, I have a discount code for you that you can use, which is down below as well. Now, this cardigan is very versatile and it comes with four views. So you have a cropped view, a traditional view that ends just at about hip length. You have a longer cardigan that's about mid thigh and then you have the duster view. And the duster view does have a split seam going down the bottom. And because those longer cardigans tend to be on trend right now, I decided to make the duster view. So let's get into that sew along. So prepping the pattern. So with this, I am just going to cut this out because with my Threadcrete subscription, I get access to the PDF as well. And fun fact, this pattern is actually free on the Sinclair Patterns website. So you can download this and stitch it up. So I'm just cutting out the size that I want to make. And then I'm using my pattern notcher to go in and make some notches. And then I'm just folding over to get the notches that are on the inside, just marking some of those areas there. And there are a ton of lines on this one, so do be sure to use layers. Now for the patch pockets. So with this, we are going to fold the top band with the wrong sides together. And then we're going to place that on the right side of the bottom of the pocket. And so we are going to have three layers that we're going to stitch through here. And I am just placing some clips on here. And so you can see that the top band is just slightly smaller than the patch pocket itself. So you will need to stretch it just slightly. Next, we are going to stitch the top here. And so I just decided to use my serger to do this, but you will want to do a stretch stitch on this. And then I went ahead and I surged around the edges. Now you could use a straight stitch for this at about a quarter of an inch. And that is because it provides the perfect guide to fold the patch pockets along. So I'm just folding along the edge of the surged seam here. And that will help us, especially with the knit fabric to get a perfectly formed rectangle. Now we need to attach these patch pockets on the pattern here. And so on the two front pieces, there are two little dots that we have marked on here that we are going to match the top up to. And then there are two dots along the bottom, which denote the bottom corner. So if you look very closely, my dots along the bottom are just slightly longer, meaning my seam allowances must have been a little bit larger than what the pattern instructed but I'm not worried. If you do have that, you want to make sure that you match up the top of the pockets and not the bottom, just so that they're placed in the right spot. And then we are going to stitch over this and you can see that I'm doing a little triangle at the top of the pocket. Now that's important so that your pocket doesn't gape. And then our pockets are complete. Now for the shoulder seams. So on the shoulder seams, we need to stabilize this because it is a slinky knit. So use a thin piece of twill tape or clear elastic to stabilize this. In this case, I am using some twill tape. Make it just a little bit longer than your shoulder seam and zigzag it on. I am just going to trim off that excess now. And so you can see it is zigzagged nicely. Next, we are going to place with right sides together the front to the back of the cardigan. And I should note that you should place that twill tape on the wrong side because of course we don't want to see it. And 
then stitch along there. And so as you stitch using your stretch stitch, or in my case, my overlocker, you will go over that twill tape and it will be nice and secure. And then optionally, you can press those seams to the back and then go over and stitch that in place. So I've just top stitched this in place so it sits perfectly right there. And you can see that on the wrong side as well. And now for the sleeves. So you will notice you have a single notch on the front of the sleeve and no notches on the back. So the first thing I like to do is with right sides together, match up that single notch. And then the sleeve also has a notch to denote the center of the sleeve. Match that to the shoulder seam and then match each of the sides. Once that is done, we can go ahead and distribute additional pins or clips going around the shoulder here so that we can attach that sleeve with no puckers and repeat for the other sleeve and stitch that in place. And so I have got that stitched nicely in place for you. And now we can do the side seams. So the only one that we need to worry about this little notch is for the extra long jacket style, so that duster style. The other ones won't have this notch, you're gonna stitch all the way down. So go ahead and pin starting at that notch and then going all the way up, match up that underarm shoulder, underarm seam and the end of your sleeve. Just place the clips all along here and stitch going all the way to that notch, leaving that bottom open. You're going to do that for both sides here. So you can see we started the notch going up and it is stitched. I decided to overlock the edges just for a little added security. Now for the side slit. So this one's optional. So if you're doing the side slit, it will look just like this. What you're going to do is you're going to finish those edges by either zigzagging or using your overlocker. And then you are going to fold over that edge. I like to start at the very center because it's a bit bulky with those seams. And I like to use pins rather than clips to really hold this in place nicely. And then you are just going to continue folding this towards the wrong side using your pins and then top stitch that in place. And it should look like this from the right side and nice and tidy from the wrong side like so. Now for the hem. So with this, we are going to turn up the hem one inch and I am going to use clips to hold this in place. And I'm just using my seam gauge just to make sure that everything is perfectly placed at that one inch hemline. And I start with the front piece and then this longer piece here is our back piece. Now, if you are not doing the side slits, it's going to be one continuous piece for your hem. So you won't have to worry about the starting and stopping along where the slits are. And once you get that in place, you can top stitch either using a zigzag, a twin needle, or in my case, I decided to use my cover stitch machine. And you wanna make sure that it has a nice stretchy seam like so. And now for the neckline band. So with this, there are two pieces. Place them right sides together and stitch along one of the short ends. Don't use an overlocker because you want it to lie nice and flat. You wanna be able to open up that seam because we will be placing this right sides, or sorry, wrong sides together. So the right sides are along the outside. And I am just going to pin either side. And once either side is pinned, making sure there's no twists, go ahead and stitch those short ends together and make sure those right sides are together because when we pop it right side out, now we are going to place it wrong sides together. And it is similar to doing any sort of band or ribbing or cuff that you have done in the past. So that center seam that we did up, we want to make that the center back. So make sure that you open up that seam and bring it together. I like to hold it with a clip and then I find my center back and I am going to attach that with right sides together. So the right side of my cardigan is facing the right side of this cuff. And then the next thing that I can do, and sorry, it's slightly off camera, is I attach the bottom piece. And then I am going to match up the notch on the band with the shoulder seam. And then I am just going to distribute the additional fabric in here. 
And I always like to start with that center back and then stretch it out, find the very bottom of the cardigan, and then go in and distribute the pins or clips in halfway points. So do it in half and then block it in half again, and then just keep adding additional clips so that you have the right amount of stretch and it's not stretched too much in one area or another. And once you have this all pinned in place, you can pop on over to your sewing machine, stitch it, and then I like to do a overlock stitch on top of that just for a little extra durability and security, as well as finishing those edges. And it looks just like so once that is completed. So it's really starting to come together. And the next thing that we need to do is the sleeve cuffs. So with this, you're going to place the sleeve cuffs right sides together and then stitch down there. And once again, don't use the overlocker because you want to make sure that that seam is lying nice and flat. Place it wrong sides together, matching up that seam and then fold it right side out. So you have a cuff that has your right side of your material all the way around. Then you're going to take your sleeve and make sure that is right side out and matching right side to right side, match up that bottom seam on your sleeve with that seam on the cuff. And then stretch it out just a little bit and then start adding in your pins and clips. Take it over to the machine and stitch it up and it should look like this. I used my overlocker for some nice extra durable stretchy stitches. Now for the reveal. Let it go, what's the use in holding on? Can we find a way where we could spend some time alone? You know where to find me, you know which way to go. As long as you love me. And our cozy cardigan is all stitched up. And now you can wear it around the house and enjoy it. Now, if you made this, I would love to hear your comments down below on what you think of this pattern. And fun note, if you go to the Sinclair Patterns website, this pattern happens to be 100% free right now. That's right, free. So there is no excuse not to make this one. And if you enjoyed this video, do give it a big thumbs up. And until next time, makers, let's get our so-spiration on. Night.